Okay, just finishing up the connection of the center array. So I'll go over my wiring dealio here. Uh, I've got our ground. This is the equipment ground, equipment system. I can never remember which one's which. Anyway, grounds the all the panels. So, um, yeah, this one runs off, boom, all the way over there. Some previous videos on that. And then it uh, finishes at the end. It just stops. And then I have another one coming off this way to that end there. And then I have the joiner here, nice and snug. And then we have my uh, communication ground that will go into the charge controller's ground mount, um, connected in the same point. So this is coming down. That will take the lightning down and away uh, into its own ground rod. Each of the arrays have that on them and then uh, because they're far enough away that there's no ground loop between ground rods so that's that and then the equipment uh, again the ground that goes to the charge controller comes in positive comes in i've got a bunch of zap ties just to help secure this because this is tiltable so here's my tilting joint is about here so all this is going to do is kind of flex down and up this is going to flex down and up and not going to rub each other all that not sure about this, but they, I believe I read somewhere you can have 1.5 meters freestanding, but that's probably in metal. They're probably going to get me to mount that because they probably won't pass code. Um, something about it. Maybe we'll throw a, a metal strap around this to secure it. I'm not sure. Maybe we pull the cap and put a screw through and just tack it in up here. We'll figure that out. Another video. Anyway, uh, positive negative ground comes in here. Goes on down through our connections. Got a nice seal on this here. Uh, these teeth are amazing. These teeth on the Delta are really aggressive. They're very hard to undo after. Um, they bite in, so of course the teeth are set, so they're anti-release, anti basically. And these ones aren't quite as aggressive, so they don't really scour the hell out of it. We had to loosen it off to get that screw for mounting the Delta. If you can see way back in there. It's a, it's a slot. So basically all you need to do is just loosen that one. And then this is the securement screw. Uh, it holds it firm. Now, one of the, the um, sorry, I'll finish that thought. So you have to take this screw right out if you ever want to remove this. And then you can just loosen that and then it'll slide off with a U-shaped U slot. We had to add a board um, because the IMOs, I honestly wish the IMOs were bigger. Just, Honestly, just make it this deep, that from here to here to the front, just a little bit more depth. You'd have just a little bit more room to work with the wires. It's really, really hard to put ferrules on these guys and bend your wires. Like, I mean, you're just, it's tight. It's its a lot of work, um, which is great because nothing's going to move, but its you're really stressing some of the, 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 the crossovers. Um, so the Delta, that's my lightning surge protect. So it's also connected on the ground up on the top side of the contact bar. So if we get a surge, it's gonna ground out before and send it down to the Delta before it even crosses into the charge controller side. Um, so the grounds just come straight up and in. Now you'll see that I've got a bunch of loops crossing over. So my PV line comes down here. We come under, we come across and we join on to number four and then the black wire back and behind comes up over and travels up loops and goes into number three. Um, now I've got my fingers reaching up in here because I have my extension wires disconnected uh, over here and over there. And the red is like right in the middle. So there's no power coming in on these lines. Check your stuff. Uh, always make sure you do a voltage check before you go reaching around and things. Um, but regardless, make sure everything's connected and, and then do a voltage check on your lines anyway. Um, some people say that you can have your switch off and then get it all wired up and then go ahead and fit it on place and, you know, do those two little screws which are impossible to replace if you lose them. I, I couldn't imagine trying to pull that off with this 10 gauge wire. It's stiff. Um, so the Delta is bigger in thickness, as you can see, than the IMO, which is totally irritating because we had to put the extra wood spacer back behind because the Delta wouldn't let the box get to the wall. So IMO, please make bigger connectors, bigger boxes. Um, plus if they just gave us another 
quarter inch in width. I mean, I don't know why this has to be so small. This is like, sure, it'll fit a four by four. Maybe that's their idea, but it's even bigger than a four by four. So this is a six inch. It's like a solid three and seven eighths inch. A, four, a two by four is three and a half inches. So it's already wider than a two by four. So just give us another quarter inch on each side. So a half inch wider, and we just have a bit more room to fit our stuff through. Like it's tight, anyway. Um, so the positive, of course, joins in with your positive and these, the positive and the, the, the red and black going to the delta are connected to the PV side, not to my charge controller side. So yes, it's upside down. That's because I wanted to have a nice flex and a nice flow. So the black comes around here, bends nicely into the top here. The red comes up, bends over nicely here. Likewise with these guys going down. I could probably have less wires crossing if I came in directly here, came in and dropped right in here. Sure. And I could have the black come in and drop right here. Everything I've learned, leave a little bit of extra wire if you can. Because then I'd have my 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 red and my black coming in here, and my red and black coming in here, and my grounds just like they are, and I wouldn't have these crossover lines coming up here. But a lot of folks were saying, leave yourself extra wire, you never know what's gonna change. Um, so a little more space would be huge. Uh, this is my pull strap. If ever I want to, um, uh, previous videos, you'd see that I have one and a quarter inch uh, conduit underground in my underground. And we staged it, stepped it down to one inch on the way up this, uh, on the upright. So everything would fit into these because these aren't big enough. Um, uh, uh, uh. If I needed to pull another two lines, say in the future we go up to 500 and some watt panels or 700 watt panels in 20 years or who knows, 1,000 watt panels, then I can easily run another two conduits in here uh, of 10 gauge. Don't parallel my, parallel my springs, strings here and I could have a 10 gauge for that one and a 10 gauge for this one independently. Because um, right now I'm running a max of uh, 490 VOC at uh, 10 and 3 eighths, 10 and 3 eighths. When you parallel them up, you get 21 and 7 sixths, I believe, something like that. Um, uh, 10.38 volts, not 10 and 3 eighths. Um, voltage stays the same, so because like, I get the 490 on the top array and 490 on the, on the bottom, when you parallel, all you do is you double up your, your amps. So my PV will have uh, a 410 nominal, Right now it's running about 450. We've got a beautiful day, whatever day is October 8th. Um, and uh, yeah, they're just, they're not running current, obviously, we're, we're open. But 449 volts is, was a test just to see where things are at. And something else we did is we checked to see uh, how the current flows. Ah, that's another video, never mind. Um, uh, <laughs> stabilizing brace here for the for the conduit again another spacer because this is my securement for my tilt array which this is basically able we're able to undo this pull these guys back these are going to be coded uh we had just have to get them on because we were using c clamps so these are on we're going to get these coded up so they don't rust um just like everything else ba -ba -ba. yeah so i hope that helps make sense for the lightning protection, each one of the array has one. It's a lot to wire in. Again, if I went direct, it'd be easy. Recap the whole video here. Uh, tensioning on these is great. Uh, using a ferrule, I used a number seven ferrule. Uh, joined the 10 and the solid copper in there, crimped it on there, got it up in the hole, and then uh, squished down the, the ferrule tip, just like these little guys here. So it squishes the square down. So everything is secure. This is not going anywhere. Can't, these things don't come out. This is a number 10 ferrule in the yellow. Um, yeah, so secure, secure. And we even did a tug test. You know, of course, we did a tug test on the ferrule on these attachments. It's not going anywhere. It holds it real, real nice. Uh, some people just go direct wire. They drop the wires in and crimp it down. Crimp it down. That's great. I mean, you're running a flat plate crimp system anyway inside of the IMO switch. Um, I don't have the other one here. I have one more to do. So there's a. It's two flat plates, and it's just basically flat crimps. It's not like a bolt with a sharp edge cutting into your wires. 
So you can do a flat, but again, a lot of folks are just, if you're using stranded, they recommend ferrules. It just increases your length and makes it a little bit harder to bend them into place. So I made it harder for myself with these. There's no question, because I didn't go direct in from top right into top, bottom to bottom. Uh, I used more space with running up the side. I put ferrules on, which makes it stiffer because you, you can't flex this land to get the wire to sit in and it doesn't start to bend until you're down here. So it's pushing, it can do it, but you gotta work it. Um, <laughs> and then, oh yeah, something else up in here, as you can see the, the gray goop. We haven't finished the sealing of this. This is duck seal. So we're making sure that we have a nice seal. So no weather can get get up in here. Uh, we have a whole goop plate. It's about a about a quarter inch thick of the duck seal sitting on the whole back face of this weather head, uh, compressed down against all of those. And then this is what actually pushed through the hole. We didn't add this on the outside. So that guarantees we don't get any snow blow or anything going in there and traveling down to the system. You gotta make sure your top sides, well, gotta make sure your connections are watertight. These screws don't go through the inside belly. They're all external. So there's no perforations in this. Once our cover plate is on, it's on. Um, something else with the, the, with the lid, if you see these two little tabs sticking out, um, there we go, uh, the two tabs. When this goes in there, uh, they slide in far enough that they lock in to the slot. So if you have it turned on, you can't take the cover plate off you actually have to turn it off to be able to pull because of these two tabs to pull this out of it out of the system um and then once you have them in as well the um i can actually slide that on right now there we go see that slides right on so um if i turn this to the right i'm turning it on and i'm sending my power it's not ready for that so what you can do is is you turn it more left and you get that lock lock option there you can see that lock uh we're gonna have padlock on there until the system's ready to turn on so yeah they're good they're a good device uh type 4 extra rated so they're totally outdoor weatherproof um and then once you're all secured up you basically you can fold this tab over top of your screw and put a uh, uh a wire tie through these two little ring holes in here and then nobody can access that screw to pull the system loosen the system off or anything in that fashion even take off the cover plate so one more step of security so the cover plate can't just be removed plus the lock there's a lot of they're great they're relatively uh, a good price if they're a little bit bigger my only complaint a little bit bigger uh, the switches are din mountable let me run over there get the other one get another switch uh, no, the actual one, this guy. So if you run a separate box, there we go, there's what I'm running. So the two is the amount of uh, conductors you're running. So we have two conductors, so you bought a two. If you're running, oopsies, I'm zooming out again, come on. Here we go. Um, because I have a series, if I had that array on one and then that array, you can buy these in four. And then you get a bigger box and all that stuff and you'd have four connection points on top four on the bottom and you always go one two it's way far apart three four five six seven eight um uh, across so you follow the count order not the linear order as on the diagram if you look on the diagram uh, yeah right there see right there see how it shows it like one two straight down three four straight down that's not how they're ordered it's one two over here by the numbering i can't see the number two on this right side there's the three up on there right beside my finger and the four is what the heck is right there it just won't focus so um now you cross over because dc and the high voltage dc you need to have a bigger distance between your between your uh switches between your contact points ac because of how it operates it doesn't need like light switches inside if you put a dc on a light switch and run through oh it'll be fine like i did on my sand battery um it, it actually can't it won't it could jump that gap and you'll burn your switch out and you'll be sending current without realizing what you're doing so 
I did that before I was being a, a goofball learning how to do work with this DC stuff. And that's the danger. If you don't know what you're doing, you can get in trouble. So that's why they're across is so it increases the gap between the switch points and then you have uh, no accidental short circuit or arcing. arcing. Um, that, oh, the other thing, these are DIN mountable. So let's see the uh, tab up here. Uh, I believe it's a DIN 32 mil. So the distance from here down to this ledge is 32 millimeters. And this is spring loaded. So if you ever wanted to take it off, yeah, then if you put it on a DIN mount, you pull this, push this down, you could release it. When you push it on, I believe it's press on to clip. So yeah, it's slightly sloped here. So you just hook on the top, push the bottom in and click that locks in. And now you're mounted to a, like if you wanted a bigger box instead of our little IMOs, um, you can mount these onto a DIN rail that you would mount inside of a metal box. Um, every projects with everyday Dave, um, he did that with, I believe with these ones. And it's just a, it's a beautiful system. You have a lot more room to work, a bigger metal box. I didn't know. I bought the IMOs uh, and I'm only running a six by six seater. So I didn't want to go with a big, huge metal box. All right, I have chatted enough. Um, yeah, last one to do. Positives disconnected, negative extension wires disconnected. We have no current coming in. I'm still gonna check both wires just because it's the right thing to do. Um, and of course these are running back to the charge controller where everything is disconnected back there. So there we go. I hope that helps some of you folks if you're looking at this type of stuff and, or, or these switches specifically, of course. All right, bye.